I want to put a tag on the text and speak tonight from this topic, keep the house smelling good. That's what I want to talk about tonight. The grass wither, the flower fade, the word of our Lord shall stand forever. The word of God is for the people of God and his word is already blessed. Lean over and tell your neighbor, keep the house smelling good. Lean over to somebody else and tell them the same thing. Keep the house smelling good. Brothers and sisters, as we sit here tonight, I'll be very transparent with you. I, Anthony Lamont Perkins Sr., can't stand to smell anything that stinks. Now, before you judge me, some of y'all feel the same way too. You can put up with a lot of stuff, but it's a challenge for you mm, to sit next to somebody that ain't as fresh as they need to be, or sure as they need to be. And you can smell them, but they can't smell them. Say, I wish I had a witness in the building. Um, can we just be real tonight? I know we say we love Jesus with all of our heart, mind, and soul. But Pastor Kreiner, I don't like nothing that stank. I can't stand walking past a trash can that needs to, come on, y'all talk with me, that needs to be dumped. You smell it before you get to it because it, it stinks. Um, um, regardless of how long you've been in church, um, if you, even if you wore your halo tonight, you know, even on your best day, you don't like things that stink. What's interesting, brothers and sisters, is that um, we have, if you will, sometimes the, a mitigated gall that when we do see someone or smell someone, that we turn our nose up to them. And truth be told, we should never get so oversaved when we smell something that stinks or see or smell someone that stinks because truth be told, we still stink. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, uh, we are wretched in his eyes that even on our best day, we're still no good. So I, I can't Look at my brother or sister and turn my nose up at them if I still got sin in my life. I wish I had a witness in the building. And, 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 and as I try my best to walk into this text on tonight, uh, brothers and sisters, nobody likes anything that stinks. But what's interesting is that sometimes when we walk inside of the house of God, we come in here stinking. Come on, don't get quiet on me now. Come on. Sometimes we walk in the church of the living God with a stinky attitude. <laughs> Sometimes we walk in the church, if you will, with stinking complaining and criticizing. Uh, sometimes we have the mitigated goal to walk in the church with our nose turned up because we're not happy with someone or somebody and you didn't forgot why you're mad at them. Y'all don't like this type of preaching. It's okay. We'll get through the turbulence. We'll be all right. 
Listen, listen, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, listen, listen, listen. God has been too good for all to all of us for us to try to act like that we're special and we've never stank before. I wish I had a witness in the building. Because we're all saved by grace. And listen, listen, listen. We ought to thank God that in spite of how we are and in spite of how we'll be, he still looks behind our faults and meets every one of our needs. And I really believe that we as believers have an opportunity to change the aroma in the house. Because before the aroma can change in our communities and in our cities, it has to change in the church. Come on. And before it changes in the church, it has to change with me. It has to start with me, and I have to admit that I still, y'all, y'all gonna make me work hard tonight. Look at your, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know you look good tonight, but you still stinky. <laughs> yeah, you still got some stink on you. It may not be as much as it used to be, but you still got a little bit on you. The text is a powerful text tonight because, because at the end of chapter 11, if I can use this for intro, end of chapter 11, Lazarus had died. He had been wrapped up in grave clothes. Jesus says to them, show me where you laid him. He, not that he didn't know where he laid them, because he's God and he's all-knowing. He said, show me where you stop trusting me. <laughs> and he then goes to the graveyard. He says, Lazarus, Lazarus comes forth with grave clothes on. And listen, the same people that wrapped them, he says, loose them. I wish I had a witness. Brothers and sisters, that's why you ought to be careful who you wrap up and who you think is dead because you don't have the final say-so over people's lives. I'm trying to help somebody tonight because if you would have stopped reading early, it would, you would have thought that he died and didn't come back to life. But listen, here it is. God, through his son Jesus, raises him back up. And in verse 1, chapter 12, it says, Says that Lazarus is sitting at the table. I'm going to try one more again. Chapter 11, brother man was dead. Chapter 11, he raises him from the dead. Chapter 11, he tells them, y'all that wrapped him, loose him and let him go. But then chapter 12, out of all the people that's sitting at the table, Lazarus is at the table. I got a good word for somebody tonight. Yes, you might have had a bad chapter 11, but don't give up on God because he's still writing. He will give you a new chapter. I wish I had a witness in the building. I wish I had a witness in the building. Look at your neighbor and say, God is not finished writing my story, and I'm not going to let you put a period where he put a comma. I'm only talking to some folk that can admit that your life ain't always been like you want it to be and you made some mistakes and people tried to write you off. But I come to declare tonight that they ain't got the last word and God is still writing. Chapter 12 blesses my soul because it don't matter what happened in chapter 11. I know chapter 12 is on the way. Oh, you ought to bless your name and say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through. You may have had a bad chapter 11, but can you thank him that chapter 12 is going to be better than your last chapter? Look, look who's at the table. It says, it says, I wish I had a witness. It said, it said, Jesus 
is sitting at the table. The master, the living word. It says it was six days before the Passover, which means that there would be a memorial that would be, if you will, a memorial meal that everyone would be taking. If you will, because they had to remember what had happened in the Old Testament. Lazarus is sitting there. He is, if you will, the miracle. <laughs> Uh, he's the miracle, watch this, and he's the wonder. And see, that's why you never give people the power to write you off because when God brings you back, they'll be the first one to wonder, how did God do it? I wish I had a witness in the building. They'll be the first one, not only to wonder how did he do it, but you got some people that feel like they Jesus monitors and they want to know why did he do it. But the same reason he gave you another chance, that's why he'll give somebody else. I wish y'all would come on and help me tonight. He, Lazarus is, is, is the testimony, the witness, and the miracle. Martha, homegirl Martha, was always ministering in the kitchen. Uh, she's the worker. And then here's Mary, who was always concerned about ministry. She's the worshiper. Are y'all still with me? And, and just in that Verse alone is enough to preach for itself. When I preached it, if you will, I preached it uh, uh, on the first day of the year. And I told my congregation, I don't care what happened in chapter 11. It's a new chapter on the way. And that's my word to somebody tonight. I don't care what you went through in the past. It's gone. You can't change it. Stop crying over it. Come on and be mature and let God write your new chapter. Look at the text. There are three things I want to just talk about and I take my seat. First thing I see that Love is displayed. If you're going to keep the house smelling good, brothers and sisters, you have to understand that it's going to take love in order to do it. Are you still with me? The text says that because of Mary's love that she was willing to give a sacrifice, brothers and sisters, that might not have made sense to other people, but it made sense to her. One of the things that, if you will, that ought to have us to give a sacrifice is to the Lord. Is Here it is. If you can testify that the Lord has kept you, you should be willing to give him a sacrifice. I'm going to try it one more again. Is there anybody in the building in this month of January that can say that if you can't thank God for anything else, you thank him because he kept you when you couldn't keep yourself. That, that, that's why you came tonight. That's why you worship him tonight because you have the attitude to understand like the old song said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. And y'all looking at me like I'm brand new, but we got the same story, baby. If it had not been for the Lord, we don't know where we would be. And that, that, that type of attitude ought to keep you willing to give a sacrifice. Now see, when you give a sacrifice full of, listen, if it don't mean nothing to you, it ain't going to mean nothing to God. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm going to sacrifice, and I'm going on a Daniel fast, and I ain't going to eat cheese. You lactose. You never eat cheese. Wish I had a witness in the building. It has to have some worth to you. You still, are you, are you with me? The Bible says not only was she willing to give a sacrifice, but the text says what she was willing to do was unpopular with people. She got on her knees. 
and bowed in his presence. She was willing, brothers and sisters, to be talked about. She was willing, if you will, to be laughed at because she understood that, listen, all of her blessings don't come from people, but it comes from the Lord. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. When you know that you need to give and display love to our Father, don't let people, if you will, stop you from giving God genuine worship because people always got something to say. They'll say you shout too loud. You shout too much. You always waving your hand and you always saying something. Well, if you knew what the Lord brought me through and how he was working with me, instead of you critiquing me, you'll be helping me give God praise. Our approach to God when we worship him may not always be the same way. But the attitude is that I need to make sure that I worship him at all times. Because the way I worship him may not be the way you worship him. But it don't mean that I ain't getting my worship on. It, it, it don't mean that I don't love. Stop letting people tell you that you ain't worshiping God if you don't stand up. If you don't clap your hands. Oh, y'all, come on, come on, talk with me. Now, truth be told, you shouldn't need a Holy Ghost cheerleader anyway to pump you up, pray you up, preach you up, pry you up. You ought to be like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You, your, your sacrifice should, should be, you should have a willing sacrifice, but your worship should be specific. However you choose to worship him, here it is. Just make sure it's in spirit and in truth. Aren't you glad tonight that we, don't, we just don't have to worship him at church? <laughs> hey, 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 listen, listen, listen. Some of my best sermons I preach, I ain't even in church. <laughs> it's when I'm in the car. It's when I'm at home. It's when I'm in my study. That, that's when I preach the best. Matter of fact, how many of you be honest tonight to say sometimes your best worship is when you don't have a clue of what's going on. Sometimes your best worship is when you don't understand what God is taking you through. Text says, text says she gives specific worship, but then it's worth something. It, it, it said, if you will, that it was costly. And see, see, what may be costly to me may not be costly to you. That's, that's why you can't get in this, this habit of measuring your worship based upon what somebody else is doing. Because if you're, if you're not careful, you will find yourself trying to keep up with the Joneses and they didn't even tell you they went bankrupt. I wish I had a witness in the building. You, you, you trying to be like somebody else and, and they faking the funk themselves. Look at your name and say, just be you. Don't worry about, can, can I say it like I want to say it? The church would be a better place if everybody stayed in your lane. Oh, okay, okay. Stay out my Kool-Aid. You don't know my flavor. <laughs> Y'all acting over saved tonight. Where, look, help, help me preach. Touch your neighbor and say, worry about yourself. The Lord didn't call you to be my Jesus monitor. 
to make sure I praise him at all times. No, you need to make sure you living your life right before you come. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. I feel the William brothers creeping up on me now. The William brothers said, sweep around your own front door for you try to sweep around mine. So, uh, uh, 12 hours to mind your business and 12 more to leave other folk business alone. Uh, uh, stay, l- l- listen, 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 listen. Everybody got skeletons in their closet. And Jackie, if they ain't in the closet, they're in the basement, the attic, the trunk, the glove compartment. They all somewhere. All I'm saying is everybody got some stank. If you're going to keep the house smelling good, love has to be displayed. And brothers and sisters, here it is, that whenever love is displayed, please know love will be denied. Watch the text. The text says that when she gives her sacrifice and she worships the Lord in her own way. Not like everybody else worships. Judas, of all people in the world, Judas, the traitor, (laughs) the thief, and the treasurer of all people had something to say. Are you kidding me? Judas that don't even know who Jesus is, but's walking with him day after day. Can I just pause right here? Can I, can I just pause right here? It's a shame for folk to say that they belong to the Lord, but really don't have a relationship with him. You can't walk with Jesus every day and stay the same way. Either something wrong with you or Jesus didn't lost his power. And I will argue that Jesus ain't lost his power, but you faking the phone. And you need to go back and start over again because if he's walking with you, he's going to change the way you act. I'm so sick of folk trying to blame everything on the devil and on Jesus. No, get your life right. <laughs> Judas walked with Jesus and still went to hell. You know what that says to me? That you just going to church ain't going to get you a ticket into heaven. (laughs) That if you don't believe and have faith in him, you just going to go to the smoking section. Let me push on. Judas... Judas, Judas says, listen, listen, I want you to watch this. Judas, Judas says, <laughs> Judas says, that could have been given to the poor. <laughs> I mean, at least he said the right thing. <laughs> but we all know that if Judas had got that, that perfume, he would have been at the corner store Selling fragrances for five dollars. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what the smell good, man. <laughs> he would have been selling for five dollars and not giving it to the poor. Y'all acting real brand new tonight. I just saw him up the street. <laughs> Come on, y'all acting real brand new. Listen, he 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 would have he wouldn't have given it to the poor. And that's why you have to be careful about people that's around you that always have something to say when you do something pertaining to your worship to the Lord Jesus. Can I help you on tonight? The reason you got to be careful about those that are around you is because they always are dissatisfied and they disapprove what you do for Jesus. Can I tell you why? Because they're upset that you give God more attention than you give them. 
Woo! I wish I had a witness in the building. I hate to bust your bubble, but you got some people in your circle that they don't like rolling with you because you don't talk about them enough. You don't pump them up enough. You, you, don't, you don't lift them up enough, but you ought to tell folk and let them know if you're going to hang around me, the only one that's getting lifted is wish I had a witness because you didn't wake me up this morning. You didn't start me on my way. You didn't give me the blessings I have. So if you're going to be around me, you got to understand that all my praise is going to the master. Judas, <laughs> Judas, Judas says, I would have gave it to the poor. Ju Judas says, Judas says, um, um, I'm, 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 I'm not, Judas says, Judas says, she, she wasted it, Watch it. Watch. Look, look at his language, she wasted it on Jesus. The text says that literally his thinking was that he would have rather given it to somebody else than to give it to Jesus. I ought to have a few witnesses in the building that understand that all of my blessings have come from my Father up above. And whenever I go to give, I'm giving to the Lord before I give to anybody else. He, 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 he critiques her. Um, and he condemns her. Brothers and sisters, what makes me upset about this here church that we are part of because you do know there's a difference between church folk and Christians <laughs> you know you have, you have you have participators and you have spectators <laughs> you, you have people that come just to watch and you have people that come to worship are y'all still with me? Uh, uh, what's, what's interesting is, is that the ones that always come to watch are the ones that always feel that they don't stink. That, 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 that all of the presence of sin is gone out of them. And we all know that as long as we're here, here on earth, the presence of sin will be but let, let me see if I, I, I do it this way. Le old lady, if you will, she, she would wake up every morning and she would look outside the window. And, and she would look outside the window and look at the family across the street. And she would say, ooh, that family show is dirty. She would say, the mama dirty, the daddy dirty, the dog dirty. They just stinking dirty. So this is what happened. This is what happened every day. She'd do it every. She'd roll up to the window and do it every day. And so she had a had a, a nurse that would come by and check on her. And so the nurse, you know, says, says you know, I'm gonna go check out what mother sees every day. So she 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 says, Ooh, they show sure is dirty. But she said, Baby, they still dirty today too. And she said, The mama dirty, the daddy dirty. The dog stinking and the kids are dirty. And the nurse said, you know, mother, I've been listening to you say this every day. She said, you know, I made a startling discovery. She said, they ain't dirty. Your window is dirty. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is before you try to condemn somebody else, make sure you clean your own window. The church gets hurt enough by getting hurt in the church trying to get healed. But because we got Jesus monitors trying to tell people what's wrong with their lives and you still got hell in your life. Love is displayed. Love is denied by Judas. Here's my last point. We're going on home. When love is displayed and love is denied, 
love will be defended. Because if you look at the text, the text says that Jesus says, <laughs> it's in red writing, I mean the big boss man talking, he said, <laughs> he says, he says, he says, and Lord, let's see, I say, I, I, I make sure I, I keep it what the Bible is saying because, you know, we, we'll add a little something, something to it, you know. Jesus says, leave her alone. Now, if that was us, it's, come on, let's just be real. We would add a few adjectives and verbs, you know, some exclamation points behind it. But he says, leave her alone. That what she has done, she's doing it because she understood the conversation that happened in John 11. Can, can I explain it like I won't explain it? That's why whenever people are on the outside looking in to your life, they always assume they know everything, but they don't know what happened in chapter 11. Because you do remember in chapter 11, he said that I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus is literally, he's on his way to the cross. Lazarus is the last miracle that he performs. He's on his way to the cross and she understands, listen, that what she brings as a sacrifice is what they normally would put on a dead body to embalm. But she understood enough and believed enough that, listen, he may die, but he ain't going to stay dead. So I'm going to not wait to give my sacrifice. I'm going to give it now. And sometimes when the Lord blesses you on Monday, you ain't got to wait till next Sunday to tell him thank you. I wish I had a witness in the building. Whenever he blesses you, you have the right and privilege to tell him thank you right then and there. I mean, if you're in the store, you ought not be ashamed to tell him thank you. If you're in your car, you might not, ought not be ashamed to tell him thank you. Whenever he performs the miracle, you ought to be willing to tell him thank you right then and there. He says, he says to her, he says to them, she's done a good thing. And the poor you will always have with you. He said, but I won't always be here with you. And see, brothers and sisters, if we understand what he's saying, he's saying that you ought to worship me while you can. Because a time is going to come where it'll be too late. That, that's why uh, the song is so important, if you will, where it says that he is Lord and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Literally meaning that if you don't bow now, you're going to bow later because eventually you're going to bow and proclaim that he is Lord. He defends her and she makes a decision, if you will, to still worship the Lord. The good news tonight, brothers and sisters, is that what she does, she explains and lets us know tonight that we have the ability to keep the house smelling good. Because in that latter part of verse 3, it said, not only did it smell good when she opened it, but the text says that the whole house was filled with the aroma. That literally, when she gave her sacrifice of praise and worship, that it filled the whole house with a sweet-smelling aroma. When worship went forth, it made the whole house smell good. I'll, I'll take this last week and take my seat. Uh, I bless the Lord, been privileged to travel across the country preaching. And one of the things I love about coming home is that when I walk in my house, I love to smell pine saw.
I'm a hundred percent man. I just like a clean house. Come on, man. When I walk in the house, I've been gone. I love the fact that when I open the door, pine saw is all in my nose. It's it's all in the house. I make sure that when I leave, that pine saw, fresh pine saw has been poured. So when I walk in my door, I will be greeted with pine saw. Y'all acting too brand new. Not only do I love pine saw, but I love Febreze. Come on, if you a Febreze member, just clap your hands. You a Febreze member. Amen. And I love Febreze because they got these new plugins, if you will. And, and the plug-in is, is made, look at this, that every now and then, it'll go, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I mean, one time, somebody came to the house, and they wasn't all fresh, and I was like, boy, I need y'all to kick in today, kick in today, because, because I knew that every time it went off, it was going to allow the house to have a fresh smell. And brothers and sisters, I'm afraid to say that unfortunately within the church that we bring too many stale and old smells on the inside. Can, can I just say this and still be loved? I wish to God that sometimes that at the church we had, if you will, the same things that we have at the airport, that they had those little things at the door that whenever you try to come in here not smelling good, it go and you say, you got to walk out and try it again. Because we want to keep the house smelling good. Remember one time I walked in the house coming from revival. So Jackie, I walked in and I didn't smell no pine saw. I didn't smell no Febreze. Highly upset. I called my brother, had some words with him. Like, you were supposed to come over, check on the house, and other stuff. Rated R. You can't hear what I said. Amen. And come to find out, I noticed that when I went to go check the plug in, it wasn't plugged in. Because the only way that plug-ins work has to be plugged in. I'm done. I'm through. Brothers and sisters, one of the reasons the church has not been able to keep a strong smell is because we've plugged in to the wrong stuff. Uh, we've decided to spend more time plugged in to Dr. Phil and the haves and the have-nots. I'm through. But if we are going to keep the house smelling good, the good news tonight is that God wants us to smell good. The good news tonight is that God wants us to have a fresh praise. And I argue tonight to say that the reason some of us cannot give him a, a fresh praise. It's not because God is not still in the blessing business, but uh, the reason why that we're not able to smell like we should is because we're not plugged in to the right socket. 
And so I close tonight by saying and challenging all of us tonight to make sure that you're really plugged in to the Lord. And I want to ask a question. Is there anybody in the building that can say that every morning I plug in to the Lord? That before I go on my day, I make sure I have a little talk with Jesus. Is there a witness in the building that can testify that the reason you're here tonight is because God is still in the blessing business. Uh, if you're not too mean and not too cold, uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, keep the house smelling good. Uh, and all that means uh, that if you're going to keep it smelling good, uh, you can't come in the house uh, with your mouth closed. Uh, you can't come in the house uh, like you're mad at somebody. Uh, but every time uh, you walk up in here, uh, you ought to have have a praise on your heart. Every time you walk in here, you ought to be able to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Y'all looking at me funny. Is there anybody in the building that can just let a breeze go off? That every time you think of the goodness of Jesus and all he done for you. You ought to be able to let one off. If you've been born again, you ought to be able to let one off. If he saved your soul, you ought to be able to let one off. Uh, is there anybody in the building uh, that knows tonight uh, that he still uh, inhabits the praise uh, of his people? Uh, Y'all looking at me funny. Uh, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, uh, but we still serve a God uh, that if you lift him up, uh, he'll draw all men unto me. Have I got a witness in here? Is there anybody in the building that can just take 30 seconds and bless his name? When you think about all he's done for you, can you bless his name? Can you keep the house smelling good? Let's take time right now and make this house smell good. Let's lift up our hands lift up my voice and give him praise if you know he's worthy shout yeah shout yeah